Australia has been wonderful. Like the land, the people, it's been inspiring and moving. One long, enjoyable learning experience. We've been attending meetings and doing a and quite a bit of traveling. For me, coming on this trip, it, it's a way to change. It's a way to make change in each other's community. So we touched down in Sydney and we landed in Redfern and we went for a walk through the community. We began our time with a smoking ceremony, which was, I think, a highlight for many of us to just begin that way in ceremony in a good way. Sorry about this rain. I should have sunk it off at the stop. My name's Graham Davis King from the Yampa people, and um, my intent with this is to be with you people today and to, and to share something from our community. We've got eight bunches of gum leaves and what that signifies is that we've got eight personalities in the world in our culture. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass this boomerang around. You can maybe share one word or a story. What, a, what an honour to be here. What an honour to, to stand with our brothers and learn. Miigwech! Hi, hi. When I was first elected moderator, it was very clear to me that the priority for our church at this time needs to be, and, and is in the hearts of people in our church, reconciliation and right relationship work. Um, I think it, for the Indigenous church, it provides opportunity to bring fresh perspective, to deepen our knowledge, and moving the dialogue along. I think we as a church, and the Uniting Churches in Australia, have a wonderful platform to, to bring together both communities and, and develop ways of communicating in relationship to one another. We can be the pot in which the, the formula is brewed. These are olives from this region and honey, but like you can find all kinds of little treats like this all over the place. And those you can take back. And you can take them back. I just want to welcome you here in the language of the Ngarindiri. The reason why I brought you all here for was to follow the, the story of Narundari. He threw a spear, and when he threw a spear, he missed the Murray Cod, and it created the Long Island, so that's his spear over here. Beauty makes me cry. Um, not only beauty of, of, of landscapes, but also some of these stories. he created all the fish that he gave life in this country. So when he created a new species of fish, he cut each piece up, piece up and he threw it back into the water. When he threw it back into the water, he said, Yinti mami tukariwalan, so you are now the bony brim. Yinti mami pulakiwalan, you are now the kala fish that swims in the water. So he created all, this, all these species of fish. One of the things I heard here, God was already here before the first boats landed. And that I realize is the same for us in Canada. I think the thing that has come home to me the most strenuously is that although the manner of colonialization has many differences between Canada and Australia, the net effect has been very much the same. We're brothers and sisters all over the world that understand that process. Whether we like it or not, it's happening to everyone. Everyone's involved in some way, shape or form to this process called colonisation. No one's missing out, 
but we're having different experiences. Young people need to, to connect with their culture. It benefits them in certain ways. I mean, you build a community and, and you feel at home when you're connected to your spirituality. This trip I've met uh, several role models like Sean. They all have a voice too. They know what it's like and they understand that it does take the young people to open society into a, a greater perspective. Here. And being uh, going on tours with the land, seeing different uh, different plants and trees and animals. It was an eye-opener for me. Uh, it was a trip of a lifetime. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Look, look at them, look. Look, look. See him? Take, take a picture, take a picture. <laughs> Welcome to his old Adyamatna country. This, this place is um, very spiritual to the Adyamatna people. Adnya is rock, Matana is the group. So we're basically the rock people of the Flinders Ranges. The original rock group. The original rock group, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm going to take you guys back, right back. All the land we believed was flat. And this little agna, little rock. He looked at it, he couldn't work it out, this jungle. Manja. He didn't know you remember the Akana Rila. Mountains started coming up. He loved that. <laughs> he kept going. He made several mountains. He, yeah, he, he was going for it. He was creating the mountains. And being able to share a bit about what we do in Canada and what happens in Australia are both our similarities are there. How can we expect the Woodies to understand us if we don't share our culture? Father? And that's what we're here to do guys, is to share. It's always has been from the beginning is to share. I don't care who you are, we're all colorblind out in the bush. This trip, uh, it really um, tested my, my spirituality and, and my, my connection with my culture. It has made me very vulnerable and I don't like to be in that spot, but it, it needs to happen, right? And it, it, um, for me, being vulnerable with, with my knowledge of my culture, it has made me such a bright person and it's made me have connections with, with the Australians. The most valuable thing that I will take away from this experience is how our churches, the United Church in Australia and the United Church of Canada, uh, is at really the beginning uh, of a very important journey. We're at, even though we, we have done uh, a number of pieces of work over the decades, we are at the very beginning of this journey that we call reconciliation. It's unfortunate, I think, that the settler society or colonialists don't realize that they, in many respects, have trod the same path that they are now inflicting upon Aboriginal peoples. And I hear the same stories here. In 1936, when I was five years of age, the police came up, on, up to the desert where I lived, where I was born, and took us away. It was a, it was a policy of the government to take away children. Without consultation, without speaking, 
I never saw my father again. You can imagine the grief that my mother and all the mothers throughout Australia went through. I died. <laughs> I died there for my mother's, my mother's empty arms. It's very moving, very moving. I, I too was taken away. I just turned six as a small little girl. I often wonder what my mother thought my coca, my grandmother, when they took the oldest girl of the oldest son away. I often wondered that. This monument honours all mothers across Australia who lost their children to the policies of forced removal. Let it never happen again. Mm. my mother and my father but no love. I could not say I love you. And only two years ago I could tell my kids I love you. So I thank you so much for inviting us to be on your land and to see what you've gone through. We have similarities and that's what I, I'm looking at. And to, to see to see where we can help each other. You've blessed me immensely, all of you. Very much. Bye-bye. So, yes, it was a wonderful time, a strengthening time, a healing time, that I wasn't alone. The fact that we're not alone, that we know uh, that other people are walking that same journey. To know that um, we're so far apart, but we're also very, very close. They have the same hopes, the same beliefs. They went through the same things that we have and, and are. I believe that it is those relationships that are most transformative for us. People will talk about the time we spent around the fire, and that was just such a blessing. How can I sit around a beautiful fire eating kangaroo meat and not feel a brotherhood and sisterhood with the people that are there with me. That those sacred fires are lit here also. So we are together in that. And those fires which have been barely burning for so long are flaming up. So that fire is connected because now we have relations. I see this as a beginning. This exchange that's happened over the last year, I'm hoping is the beginning of ongoing relationship building. We've made a good start. I would hate for us to end here. I, I would like this to be like a launch pad for um, all kinds of additional relationships that might grow out of this experience. I'm going to um, take home friendship and maybe someday through our experiences, you know, that government and people, will, those in power will understand. The people and their ceremonies here. If I never have a chance to come back here, that will always live with me and it'll keep me strong. I will look back at it as a, a spiritual journey and a physical journey and a, uh, a mental journey really of, of where I can be a voice for younger kids, be a voice for my peers. So taking it home, I'm gonna use it within the classroom. I'm going to use it in my photography. I'm going to use it in, in, in my storytelling um, because it's a part of me now. And it's, it's my beginning of fighting back 